Are you a, are you a uh, fan of Power World, Mr. Techie? I haven't played it yet. I have a lot of friends that have played it, and I've been hearing. I was playing Baldur's Gate on my uh, stream when someone mentioned, like, why aren't yeah. you streaming Power World? And I'm like, I have no idea what that is. It's Pokemon with guns. And I'm like, all right. Yeah, sure. That sounds like something that exists. Yeah, okay. Yeah, basically. It's like everything has to be Fortnite-esque now. It's like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah no, I get it. That sounds about it. right. Yeah, it's fine. It's cool. Okay, so it's very. I, it's, I'm surprised yeah. people don't compare it more to like Ark. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. Like it's a lot more similar to Ark. Okay, so that's what I did wrong. I mm. didn't uh, fix one of the stream keys. That's okay. The other ones are working, so people can see me work through the process. I knew we kept you around for a reason. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have a, like a Patreon, but this should be like your. Like for only your fans, you know, you have the back stuff, you know, like you're doing all that extra stuff <laughs> in the background. Yeah. So Ryan, for as low as one dollar a month, I, you two can watch me screw up I on a regular say, basis. Your nails look awesome, Sam. Yeah, my girlfriend painted my nails today. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm feeling kind of pretty. You, you're very you know, pretty. <laughs> you know, Sam, nothing thank flexes you. uh, your masculinity like letting your girlfriend uh, do up them nails. That is perfect. Love it. I was uh, telling uh, Honestly, my agree. coworkers Ryan, the other the, day, like, exactly, like, <laughs> uh, dude, what's more masculine, the guy that drinks a beer and tolerates how shitty it tastes, or the guy that doesn't give a fuck that people make fun of him for drinking White Claw? Oh, I mean, white claws are gross. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I feel about like like fruity alcohols. Where people are like, oh, you should have like a whiskey on the rocks. I'm like, I'm like, I want a damn lemon drop, bro. Like, <laughs> you know, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Give me something that tastes good. They get you so much drunk or too. Exactly. Mm, I suppose so. But yeah, drinking alcohol yeah. is supposed to be a miserable experience. That's how you know. <laughs> how do you How incorporate you a miserable drink. drinking experience into your tabletop games though <laughs> like well actually i was doing we were playing last night and they were like hey i have this beer and i'm like all right and it's like yeah it's horrible it's awful and it's like yeah <laughs> a terrible beer for all the players you have to make a con check or just like you know you feel a little nauseous maybe you'll just start so you know all over the bar you know you're like in combat 12 hours later and it just finds like it hits you out of nowhere you're like oh, yeah you well see i don't i don't drink but my friends all do and so they're always have an assortment of like this random stuff we found and i'll try like a sip or so and i'm like every now and then it's mostly good like there was this one that was mango flavored i'm like that was great but the shit yeah, last yeah. night was horrible i don't know i can't remember what it was but it wasn't good yeah, I'm very moderate when it comes to that kind of stuff. But even when I'm playing in game, like I'll be like, eh, moderate in real life, moderate in game. It's really no different for me. But then everybody else that I play with, like in life and uh, in game, drugs and alcohol all the time. We had a druid in one game who was trying to build a weed empire. And <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, the go on. <laughs> he <laughs> hails from the high forest. And oh, that's perfect. Was he a high elf? Yes, he, he was a high. He was a very high elf. A high elf, high a high forest druid. That's perfect. Yeah, I, and he would. Uh, I guess as far as uh, the lore that he kind of came up with was concerned, it came from the grandfather tree. So he would uh, call it Granddaddy Perp, which I believe that's an actual strain. <laughs> like well, uh, uh, I don't smoke. Everyone else in our group does, and I'm just like, okay, See, that's, that's less of a joke, and that's like some some thought went into that. Like you had to yeah. sit down yeah. to kind of come up with all of that, and it's just like I like that kind of shit. Yeah, was he uh, a circle of the land or uh, sports? I, the cloud. Uh, you know, I can't remember what kind of druid he was, but yeah. I, he was very much in the entrepreneurial side of things. Like he would, <laughs> he was, he heavily subscribed to that first hit is free uh, motif. Like that, that's the line that the dare program sold you on in school. Yeah, and then like yeah. you get to high school and then nobody's offering free anything. And you're like, what is this shit? I'm like no, so he, so he was a business druid. He yeah, knew, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Business druids. You, you don't see enough of those, honestly. That's clever. Though. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. 
I thought it was hilarious. Look, if anyone knows the business market, it's a druid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they got that. I mean, for, for any kind of weed, I would go to a druid. I mean, that's just exactly. like that's their thing. You that's know? just so, like, good branding. Yeah, yeah, really. You know? I was offered uh, the first time I was ever offered cigarettes was on the school bus, and it and the the girl did <laughs> offer them to me for free. So I'm just like, hey, you want a cigarette? And I'm like, no, but. <laughs> wow it finally happened because all the anti-drug stuff all throughout my life is like oh my god this is the moment this no, is it no. it's happening <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame it was like cigarettes though it's like it's dude you, yeah. you don't you don't offer someone a free cigarette if you do it once they're coming uh, to you every day for the rest of your life Let's and you'll never have a lighter <laughs> again and also uh we don't get approached and asked about you know, we as much as Dare said we would. Mm. I'm disappointed about that. Maybe it's because we're like nerds and stuff. Like no one really walks up to like, hey, those guys are playing D and D over there. They're watching anime. Uh, one of them has like a One Piece shirt. Maybe we should offer them drugs. <laughs> I mean, hey, do you guys want to be cool? I mean, you're already cool, but do you want to be cooler? <laughs> <laughs> the clearly endorse the use of legal paraphernalia. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, my, my group that I game with, uh, they're into all of that stuff. And uh, they uh, see mushrooms, LSD occasionally, you know. So, like, yeah, we definitely. So, you know, yeah. one of these days we'll make it four minutes into a recording without mentioning drugs. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's, it's impressive for me because I don't drink. I don't yeah, smoke. I'm very boring. But, like, if that's the direction of the conversation, that's what we'll do. Honestly, that's I'm the same way with a lot of stuff. And it's just like people are like, wait a minute. What do you mean you don't smoke? <laughs> I don't smoke, period. Like nothing. So that's exactly. like that clarifying for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I'm very much the same way. And it's just like it's it's baffling to people, especially like if they see like I got long hair. They're like, yeah, what? Preconceptions blown. That's true. Well, I feel like we hit all the points to uh, <laughs> <and then> the <laughs> intro music. <laughs> and Welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows, the only show that brings you monsters, news, and homebrews, and maybe a little something extra if your crew is into that. If I won't tell. I am your host, Orion. I am your host, Sam. Welcome back to another unfortunately drug-free episode. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have a, a special guest with us today. Uh, you might know him as the One Piece guy. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? One Piece. Hey, everybody. Uh, Teching 101 here, and I have a YouTube channel that mostly focuses on One Piece, which is a small, insignificant manga. It, it just came out last year. I think it's going places, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it's going no, places. This is my first time I'm really hearing of it. Yeah, you know, it's uh, getting an anime that was just announced. Actually, a new anime was just announced. For yeah, it. yeah. We do the whole thing from episode <laughs> one, from chapter oh, one. Yeah. The, the One Piece is real. And is you, real. Yep. you know what? I, I hear there's a very catchy rap that all the kids are loving these days for it. Yeah. So, Oh, it's great. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> since this is a D&D &D relevant podcast, I am also part of One Piece D&D, &D, which is uh, DM'd by my friend Daniel Rustage over on Twitch. So we did uh, like a pirate themed D, D and that was fun and now we're doing a marines version so nice yeah yeah it sounds fun yeah i saw sure, uh, ryan yeah. has mentioned our one piece campaign to you yeah i i actually I started <laughs> oh, yeah. i yeah i was gonna mention that i uh, i started like formulating the ideas for running our own one piece D, &D and like i was already familiar with your one piece content before that but then like doing more research online i stumbled upon uh the campaign that you guys are in and i'm like okay i Maybe I can like avoid doing all the same tropes that uh, Rustage does, so that like my players can't like stumble upon this and then predict plot points. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Uh, we were not the first. There was even a One Piece D and D podcast before uh, Rustage did his. Really? 
Yeah, there. I think there were two. There was one that I went. I think that went like episode six or seven. I think there was another one that only had like one session, like a one shot kind of deal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's been since uh, twenty twenty, so like like almost four years now, which is insane that we've been doing it for that long. Well, uh, I'm certainly grateful. It helps me get through uh, my days in the day job. <laughs> so it's like I, I hear that it's a fun experience. So you you'll have fun if you want to run one. <laughs> yeah, the world is just so vast. You could do so much with it. it. It really is. Like I'm starting our campaign off in the North Blue because like it's mm -hmm. considered to be one of the weaker seas, and it's, it's also the most dangerous. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, not weaker seas. Uh, I meant to say more technologically advanced. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. It is that. Yes. So it's like, okay, there's, I can kind of like throw all kinds of weird, wacky tech in there. So that's going to, that'll be a fun way to Absolutely. start things off. That's the fun thing about D and uh, not well D and D and One Piece is the whole world is so anachronistic. You could have laser cannons. You could have medieval pirate ships and stuff. It's, it, it works fine. Like it fits. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. That's, that's all interesting. I, I can't wait to see uh, all the kinds of advancements that we could make, especially like as the the weapon master or weapon maker of our, our group. Ooh. I can't wait. I'm excited for that. Yeah, it it's gonna be interesting moving into tomorrow night's uh, campaign when you uh, resume your fight with the uh, beaver beaver fruit user. <laughs> Catch up. <laughs> Catch hands, man. man, he can build a dam like no one's business. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, had so that, much that fun, fun with that. Yeah. I there was I don't want to give too much away if you ever plan to check it out, but there was a moment at the end where to his escape he leaped off of a cliff, you know, and my fish man character is like, Oh, you think I won't follow you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like well, a shark. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, and then you kind of like stumbled into the uh, situation, which I did a little bit of foreshadowing uh, for that. Uh, because he's a beaver, like beavers have a coating of like oil all over their body. So yep. they're, theoretically, he's one of the few devil fruit users that can move in water. Mm. Yeah, I was wondering. It was kind of giving me like otters, how they kind of have like a similar thing. Mm -hmm. where mm. They're like fur makes some moves through the water, you know? And uh, it almost reminds me of like ducks as well. They're like water resistant. Yeah, most of them have like their down feathers that are like resistant. Yeah. Like if you even look at a beaver, it's they always have like a sheen to them. Like there's always yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So I was trying to think. I was like, because I remember you said he had what was it a resistance to to lightning? Was it? Uh, like that. It wasn't that it's really a lightning resistance. It's just uh, when our uh, when the mink of the party decided to use a electro on him, uh, she got <laughs> to touch his greasiness. <laughs> Oh, gotcha, gotcha. It's just like, oh, ew, that, that's kind of gross. Yeah, sure. Do like a, See, that's that's bringing physics thing. into it. I like that, yeah. Yeah, that was super interesting. Mm. But hey, you guys managed to get through that fight pretty well, and I'm looking forward to the next session. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I guess I got to bring him in. <laughs> <laughs> That that was me last night. I finished my uh, my one one of my sessions, and uh, it's like, oh wow, you guys got through like the whole thing within like w like an hour and a half. And I'm just like, all right, so we just bullshitted for the rest. And I'm like, all right, I need to really sit down for the next one because there's a lot of places this could go now. I've definitely been there. Yeah, it, that's just how it goes. Like, mm -hmm. I'll be like over prepared in like every other regard, like entire everything planned out for something, and the players are like. You know what? We're just going to hyper focus on this one thing. J just the one thing. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I thought they were going to hyper focus on the one thing and they <laughs> didn't. And I'm like, all right. I mean, they, they focused on it for a fair amount Change of time, but not as long as I thought they would. <laughs> you yeah. fool. A boy yeah. commission. <laughs> yep. Genie shows up and grants you one wish and they resolve that within like 15, 20 minutes. And I'm like, wow, okay. Uh, and mm. my one, one of my friends at the table actually said, he's like, well, the reason we were kind of so quick is there was a situation in another campaign where we had a genie and it took two and a half hours to get through the wish. So <laughs> it's like, we wanted to not do that again. So let's just get, Oh, leave it to the OBS to be a pain. Damn. Oh, Orion froze up. He froze ah, up there. for. There a we go. There oh, we go. See, th this is why are. we use Libsyn, because like it'll do separate tracks individually. So that's not going to really make it into the final recording. There you go. Yeah. I'll never know. 
It's like, that's a secret for our stream watchers. <laughs> it it is. It's one of the, the little Easter eggs of uh, technology. <laughs> <laughs> the Easter egg of technology. Yes. Yeah, you get to watch our our lags. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one day we'll get it right. We'll, we'll get it right one day. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, I guess uh, what? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Maybe, maybe one day I'll even learn how to talk. <laughs> okay, I mean, you know, about. it takes like a couple decades. You know. Yeah, you know. I'll, I'll give it like a three more decades. If not, yeah. just swear off talking altogether. Yeah, that Done. seems fair. Three more decades. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get to around fifty, you should have it somewhat mastered. Yeah, I, I should um, hope. Sixty for you is going to be a good year. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tekking, how did you get into D and D? Oh wow, uh, I had been interested in it for a while. I actually thought about that before. I think it was the first time I'd ever experienced like a D and D anything was uh, that ex episode of Dexter's Laboratory back in like the nineties. <laughs> yes. I think I think that I was the first that. time I ever found out like what it was. But I didn't. None of oh my, my friends God. were interested like all the way up through school. And uh, there was a YouTuber by the name of uh, the Spoony One, Noah Antweiler, way back in the day. And he it sounds familiar of, like, somehow. With, he, was, he was part of that guy with the glasses.com, like one of the early on internet reviewers mm. and stuff. And mm. he had a show called Counter Monkey where he just told stories about like mostly like third edition, like when he was like playing. And uh, mm. that got me really invested. And then I, I did, I still didn't start playing until 2019 with my friends because that's as long as I found my group that I'm with now. Um, right. But that's how, that's my story. And I got into it. And then eventually Rustage asked me like a year later to do the One Piece D&D thing. And now, here we are. You know, I got to give him credit. Rapping and uh, dungeon mastering. Like he's a, a jack of all trades. He really he's is. got it all. This is the rustage that does the anime raps? No, this yes. is the other rustage. That's oh, yeah, okay. yes, this is, no, this I was like, huh? There's yeah. two rustages. <laughs> well, yeah, the One Piece D&D is on rustage too. So yeah, oh, God. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his side yeah. channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, th that's the guy. I want that to see if guy. I could ask him to come on the show. I think that'd be fun. He would probably do it. He also just started his own podcast about uh, like D and D and stuff. So, ooh, yeah. crossover episode. That's all yeah, I'm saying. Honestly, this is the time. Yeah, <laughs> is this a crossover episode? <laughs> <laughs> that maybe, maybe. Uh, that's one of the things I honestly just thinking like One Piece and D and D like. You ever notice how like the entire uh, series just runs like your own home games? So, yeah, I've noticed that with One Piece and I've also noticed that with a lot of other like whenever I'm watching like Castlevania, which was like the Netflix show, I'm just sitting there like this is a D&D &D campaign, like 100 percent. Like we have to get to the place <laughs> to get all the we have to find the gear and then we go fight Dracula. It's like this is. Yeah. I, I swear Oda just has a bunch of character sheets uh, in his house and he's just like got like a, a whole murder board with things and just linking them from like got the little string and everything. Oda, Oda knows all the people that are going to die and he has a folder of all of them and he's just like, oh, <laughs> they don't even know yet. <laughs> they have no idea. <laughs> Damn, like everything's just so well planned out. I hope that I can aspire to be the like on that level. But mm -hmm. I think I'll just ad lib it till it works. <laughs> yeah. I started just DMing my own thing. Um, I did a few one shots and I started the campaign I'm doing now about a year ago and I've gotten better, but I still have a way to go. It takes time. Like a yeah. Yeah. early DMing for me, like I used to watch a lot of videos by Matt Colville to kind of kind of get into the headspace of where I want to be with that. And like, I've always worked a lot of jobs where it's perfectly fine for me to listen to stuff while I'm working. So it's just like, okay, yeah. it, it, almost like audiobooks, like training myself. That's nice. Yeah. Definitely. I get the same kind of feel. I listen to a lot of uh, my audiobooks. They kind of hit the same feeling as like a D&D &D campaign. I get a lot of my ideas from like those stories or those like situations. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just like, I, I kind of appreciate the one of the things uh, with the world building with One Piece, because using that as a setting is just like there's so much potential there. And like you can 
like traditional D&D, you got like, okay, we have generic lycanthropes. We got uh, generic this, generic that. In One Piece, nothing is generic. Nothing is generic. You could have a werewolf that ate the the hawk zone. So now you have a werewolf hawk that could breathe yes. fire for some reason. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. It, I think Oda crazy. really nailed the uh, the world building setting with like, hey, I'm just gonna make a big world with a super ocean, and then just mm. every island has a completely different climate. He bases them off of like uh, like Alabasta is based off of ancient Egypt, and then yeah, Water Seven is based off of Venice and it's just you have so much you could work with in that setting mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's really beautiful stuff and i just really like just working with all of that it's just like so much to play with that oftentimes i don't know where to begin like i got all these ideas for uh mythical zoan fruits i want to throw yeah. as uh, enemies at my party uh one that i got to thinking about the other day because like wait a minute the Kuma's always walking around with a Bible. There's, there's like yep. nuns in D and D, and like, mm. yep. Luffy's got the, uh, yep. it, the, there are God devil fruits. So yep. the Jesus Jesus fruit is totally a possibility, <laughs> and I don't know how to handle this revelation. <laughs> I think there's a there's a theory that a particular character has like because we haven't seen it yet in the series like an angel like mythical zone but I I think there's mm. a character that might very likely have it so uh, yeah but you could do so much with it like like even Oda in the story was like all of a sudden all a bunch of mythical zones show up in Wano and it's like yeah because those are the th those are the fun ones you could do anything you know yeah and honestly it's in the new world it's just like okay well. All the more powerful things are going to show up there because, like, that's just mm -hmm. where where else are you going to be? You want to be where that's the, where the action at. happens. Yeah, that's where things go down. Knows nothing really about One Piece this is also interesting. <laughs> oh, I mean, like, it's a fascinating series. Yeah, yeah, you for sure. Pick pick it up for sure. There's a lot to get into. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah. I also love just having players in my party that have never uh, gotten into One Piece. So, like, they get to have, like, the extra, like, Whoa, that wow factor with everything yep. that's introduced as we go. It's like, wait a minute, there's minks, there's furries in this game, and they control electricity? <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, static electricity furries. That's okay. how that works. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we were, we've were we been using this... Uh, I, I don't even remember who made it. I really should have looked it up before the show to take note. Mm. But there's an entire a One Piece uh, D and D five uh, E homebrew uh, like got it's got a Dungeon Master's book, a Player's Handbook, and other stuff uh, for it. I and didn't it, know this. Yeah, it has a lot of fun stuff. So I've been using a lot of the rules that come from that. Like it has uh, mm. pirate prestige instead of uh, inspiration points, and then I kind of like cool. then morphed that with uh, some homebrew uh, rules that i've kind of put together so it's like okay you, you get this and you can apply your prestige points to either team attacks or special roles for like a uh, your role in the crew yeah i like that that's a cool idea i have to look into that i've never even knew that existed yeah uh, yeah i'll send you a link to all Go that ahead, stuff yeah. afterwards because i think you'll really like it it's a I, fantastic I so... resource I see so many D and D homebrews. I saw one the other day that was a complete set for Dante's Inferno uh, in D and D, <gasps> but it's Ooh, like badass. all laid out, and it's the coolest oh, shit ever. That sounds so cool. It's the coolest thing. They take every class, and there's a you could like if you wanted to play a sorcerer, you could still play a sorcerer, but then they have like a cool name for it when you're in hell, like the sinner sorcerer class. And they each have different names Ooh, for each one. I like that. So dope, and I think they add one new class for it. I, want uh, but I, I will give you the link for that as well because it is so cool. <laughs> Acheron, so Acheron cool. Games makes it, and I'm yeah, they they did something like that for this uh, for what we're using for our One Piece game. Like we don't have Bard, we have the Scald. We don't have like uh, what was your? Uh, you said your class was the Devil Forged. It, it's like some kind of weird Devil thing that forged. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, some kind of like warlock artificer type you. Yeah, it's like uh, they work with uh, some of the newer information that's coming out in uh, the later chapters of One Piece, where it's just like, okay, we've well, got uh, yeah, lineage okay. factors and like trying to apply like these little intricate things. It's like, okay, so that's going to be a slow burn for this campaign, kind of slow reveal as to what he's actually doing with his abilities. Look, any listeners out there who are into Dante's Inferno, if you are running this campaign or are playing to, 
hit me up or us up. <laughs> I've wanted to, cause I love Dante's Inferno with that a passion. So and I, I want to run something like that for so long. And then I found this and I'm like, Oh cool. I don't have to, I don't have to do anything. I could just buy this. Dante's you Inferno know? is one of like my favorite hits, like that childhood, like hack and slash, like, ah, Oh, I, Oh yeah. I mean, oh, you're talking, you're talking about the video game. Yeah. You're talking well, about Devil too. May Cry that, kind that, of thing. Yeah. All right. Too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I played like, that, but I also saw, like, actually read the books too. Right? Yeah, me too. It, it's literally an epic, so you know if that says everything you need to know, it does. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it has the it has the structure for it. Yeah, just go through hell. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the hells already exist. <laughs> yeah, and if your players have any complaints as to why everything is so difficult and uh, <laughs> everything's trying to kill them. I don't know what to tell you guys. You're By in the way, hell. You're in hell. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can't complain at this point. <laughs> Them's I mean, the rules. I mean, it's kind of like the Descent to Avernus, right? They go into the nine yeah. hells. Yeah, that's the kind of like, that's the D&D version of like, yeah, this is a little different, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, they got the different layers and stuff. So it's like, you can definitely see where a lot of the D&D version takes its inspiration from. Yeah, so for like sure, for sure. in this one, like for example, if you play a fighter in this version, you are a tyrant in hell. You, you know, if you're Ooh. a paladin, you're a saint, you know, and it's just a different name that adds like extra flavors for your powers. It's cool. Like nice. That. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, Sam, what do we got for the monster this week? Ah, yes. Uh, I know you, um, I can mention Genie earlier. In yeah, because I, I had the, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Ryan came to me and said, you know, why don't we pick Jin for this week? And I was like, oh, yeah, I like Jin. They're cool. They are. And we haven't talked about them yet. We have not. He's They're got the cards. cards. <laughs> I brought it up just because I used one in my campaign yesterday. So I'm like, yeah, I mean, if you're going to uh, something I know about right and right now, yeah. here you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, pretty relevant. I get to talk about the you know the differences between Jin, Genie, you know, and that's always interesting. So let's go ahead and get started here. We need to make a segment sound for. Uh, We've been monster. saying that for months, and I, I keep forgetting. Uh, I <laughs> procrastination. Way, I say, that <laughs> intro was one of the most metal podcast intros <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. So you're set on that. Yeah. You're good in terms of music. Uh, thank you. That one is courtesy of Techno Axe. He does royalty free music on YouTube, and he, he has just such a diverse catalog of music. It's just like. How could you not? This guy's got great stuff. I even picked up like some pirate stuff to throw into like a uh, certain scenes for the One Piece campaign. So I was like, okay, got that on tap. Press a button. Good to go. Yeah, Techno Axe. I'm looking that guy up. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So Jin were a type of genie native to the elemental plane of air. Jin resembled extremely tall human men and women, averaging 10 feet, 5 inches, 3 point. 061 meters in height with well muscled and physically fit features. Their features were aristocratic and considered attractive by human standards. Their skin tone ranged from pale blue to a more common olive brown or dark tan. Uh, their eyes were usually brown but had a rare few blue, though they were believed to be marked by fate for great deeds. Whether for good or hmm. ill, they could have increased powers by the evil eye. Genie garments were typically shimmering silk designed for comfort and to flaunt their muscular physiques. Okay, so I'm going to have to, you know, get some silk, start working out. <laughs> They're all uh, jacked, yeah. I, I can I mean, make this work, get that gin cosplay going for the season. Yeah, the, the typical representation of genies, you know, we're pretty yeah. close to the idea of what a gin is supposed to look like. And then you have like supernatural. Well, they're a little more modern, maybe. Yeah. And, like their humanoid forms have like the tattoos, you know, mm -hmm. the Hey, I can see that being. Robin like, Williams exactly. taught me everything I need to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. It's just Robin True. Williams. There you go. <laughs> The one Getting I used, the, I, uh, I the one I used, I based off. Have you ever played Yu Gi Oh? I based off of Legend, like, yes. the, yes. the genie who's just the big oh, green yeah. guy. Yeah, that dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's like inside the yeah the, the actual lamp. lamp, and he comes out. Yeah. yeah, the lamp. That's what it's called. That's so iconic for a monster that's got no effect. 
Yeah, I love <laughs> I know, it. Right? Well, he okay. comes out of the lamp, and the lamp's a separate card that has an effect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I see. Lamp. You can, like, add stuff to him. I remember that. That was a fun. Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh was a fun time. Well, he had like <laughs> eighteen hundred attack points, so he was pretty mm-hmm. solid. You know, it was pretty. I, I originally was gonna just call the genie in my campaign La Jin, and I'm like, yeah, but that's kind of like because it's <laughs> Jin La Jin, so I named him Jin because I thought that sounded cool. Yeah, but, uh, and that's the other thing; their names are usually kind of like elegant. Like yes, that, very elegant, know? very royal, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And I do um, go into a little bit how they mm-hmm. all kind of have these like royal or like noble bloodlines, and like you know, a lot of the ones that you see in the plains are like belonging to a family line. Yeah, and, and when my mm-hmm. genie, like when he they rubbed the lamp and he came out, he's like, I am Jabani Nahafta the second of the Citadel of Ice and yeah, Steel. Yeah, very proud. Because it specifically mm. says the ones that grant wishes are of like a royal bloodline. They mm-hmm. are like princes and stuff, you know, like that's that's their right. status. Like high yeah. status. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. So getting into the real life mythology of Jin here, they were considered to be generally invisible, though they were supposed to be able to oh sorry, they were supposed to be comprised of thin and subtle bodies and able to change their forms at will <laughs> but, however they were known to favor a snake form but could also choose to appear as scorpions lizards or humans uh, so desert folk <laughs> yeah, <basically. laughs> apparently i mean arabian were, knights um, i mean yeah. yeah yeah they were they were very known to engage in sexual affairs with humans and produce offspring if they were injured by someone they usually seek revenge and possess the assailant's body refusing to leave it until forced to do so by exorcism Jin do not usually meddle in human affairs, preferring to live with their own kind in tribes similar to those of pre- right, pre-Islamic Arabia. Okay, so the only affairs they meddle in are the ones that they're having. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> okay, exactly. okay. That sounds hey, like a know, cool idea for an exorcist home. movie, though. Like the next <laughs> one, yeah. <laughs> That that could oh, be a I lot of it. fun. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> you also mentioned that like they ha- they will like have affairs with like humanoids and like produce offspring. Like, yeah. what what does a a half elemental half gin do? Like, what does that turn into as like a question. player? They're made of they're made of air and they're invisible. How would that even work? But okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I mean, they could take a physical form, right? I so, guess so. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. I guess you would have something like a Janasi. Yeah, you'd have a Janasi. Uh, okay, so. you know what? Yeah. That checks out. Yeah, that makes sense to me at least. Yeah, like a, <laughs> have Janasi basically be kind of like uh, Asimar and Tieflings. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Hmm, it writes itself. Yep. And in common folklore, Jin are conceivable are able to conceive uh, within inanimate objects so they could hide within like stones, trees, okay, okay. beneath the earth, in the air, and in fire. They possess the bodily needs of human beings and could even be killed, but they are free from all physical restraints. Mm. Right. And That's interesting. That comes, you know, with the ability to kind of shift their forms. Yeah. yeah. I kind of mentioned uh, the Jin Supernatural. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a, a common you know idea that jinn like to torture or like to kind of manipulate and play around with people and the ones in supernatural specifically you know their main ability was their hallucinogenic touch right which kind of comes into the whole idea of like they grant you wishes you know they make you believe they grant your wishes but it's always twisted in some kind of illusion like a monkey's yeah. paw type deal yeah, yeah. exactly okay yeah. I'm, so, looking, see I'm looking at an image of what they look like in Supernatural. I'm like, okay, I see the direction they took. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, by touching someone, they could induce a series of delusions on the mind of the target, typically causing them to enter in an unconscious dream-like state. Inside it, the person could relive their deepest dreams and desires over and over again, akin to an endless loop. These delusions could also be induced in a more mild fashion, leaving the person awake, but at the risk of having them break on a mental level due to the mix of reality and delusion. Okay, like a kind of a a weird daydreamy kind of state. 
that's yeah, that's a I clever agree. twist on it though like they mm -hmm. don't actually grant your wishes they just make you think that they've granted your wish yeah. you know that's actually a clever way to do it yeah. I, I like yeah, that because then like you could too. have the lower class ones be like that's what they do that's their game but everyone only talks about the high nobility ones that can actually fucking do it yeah 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 they want to be like them, I bet. Yeah, they're just like, <laughs> hey, those those fancy royal genies, they get to have all the wishes. We could do that too. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just so, making a human like trip out on like LSD or something. You yeah, know? they're just making fun out. It's just, you know, uh, almost like a hypnosis. Like, uh, yeah. You're like, wow, uh, you look very thirsty. Uh, wouldn't you wish for something to drink? Yeah, I really <laughs> wish I had something to drink. Uh, look at this lemonade. Your wish is my <laughs> command. <laughs> or no, he still mess with you. It'd be like, man, I could go for a Mountain Dew. Here's RC Cola. No, no. <laughs> the true monkey's pun. <laughs> <laughs> so genies and folklore and media are the you know westernized version of the myths and abilities behind the jinn. The idea that the jinn grants wishes is both incorrect and correct at the same time, in the sense that through their manipulations and abilities, you know, that's kind of same with the supernatural versions. Once I get into the forgotten realms, you know, lore here in a minute, you definitely definitely get to see kind of the. The similarities, kind of the like most, their morals. And, yeah, the most famous one from the West is probably Robin Williams' portrayal of the genie. Yeah, and Aladdin yeah, yeah. is most, probably the most famous one. Yeah, mm -hmm. where yeah. he starts out, you know, he's very like tricksy. He, yeah. He's kind of playing with him for a while, and he kind of he's like, oh, I don't really care about you, you know, humans or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, slowly, you know. Yeah, I could see it. Um, in the Forgotten Realms, Jinn were wild but benevolent creatures as a whole. While no genie liked being enslaved, Jinn were the most tolerant of temporary servitude to mortals. They were forgiving of a mortal master's flaws or even amused by them. They viewed short-term servitude as determined by fate and knew that no one could defy one's fate. However, long-term service upset them and being imprisoned was considered anathema. They would not forgive betrayal. Those who wished to gain the brief service of a djinn of a jinn should gift them with five meals gemstones magical items flattery and other forms of bribery hmm you know there's a there's a genie subclass for the warlock and like you're just giving me all kinds of ways to like be like oh uh, if you're if you're gonna be a genie warlock in one of my campaigns uh guess what this man's demanding five okay. meals a day <laughs> you know you gotta treat him you real appease? good yeah, because you have to you have to convince these entities to want to fuck with you. Like exactly, yeah. <laughs> in in, in <laughs> mine, like, it was um he was like tasked to grant a wish to whoever you know like rub the lamp, and one of the players in my campaign actually figured out. Wait a minute, we could just not ask for a wish, and he has to pal around with us, and he won't be able to leave until he grants <laughs> the wish. And I'm like, yeah. okay, you figured it out. Now they didn't do that, but they could have. That was one direction I thought yeah. they could go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, just kind of like please it. come on, guys. It's been a week. Would you please wish for something already? I want to go home. We're gonna Stockholm syndrome this guy into being a bro. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they might do that. Yeah, he's just gonna join the party. <laughs> yeah, that would have been cool if he could. Yeah, <laughs> they can fight, they definitely can fight. <laughs> So talking a little bit about uh, Jin society here. The Jin were ruled by the great Caliph Hassam al Balil ben Nafat yep. al Yugagim. <laughs> yep, yep, it's a very long name. <laughs> that yeah. sounds like a Master Jin thing. Like, a come on, Cloud Prince Ali al Ababwa. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's a that's a mouthful. Yeah. He really left his capital, the court of ice and steel. He was served by various nobles and officials, including lesser caliphs, viz viziers, beys, emirs, chiefs. Sheriffs and Malik's words. Each <laughs> jinn freehold was ruled by a local chief or headman. Okay, so like a chieftain, I guess. All jinn swore allegiance to the Grand Caliph, whose word was law. For disobeying a local caliph, a jinn risked punishment, but the penalty for disobeying the Grand Caliph was death. So it's kind of like uh, like the Pope, right? Yeah, yeah that makes sense. No, the genie Pope. While genie 
Yeah, the yeah, genie genie yeah. While Jinni government was fairly loose, it was too restrictive for most Jin. They often visited the prime material plane for the mm-hmm. sake of respite from local lords and family. While they appeared in great numbers on their home plane, Jin tended to be solitary on the prime material plane. Most Jin were friendly towards mortals, but mischievous. They often played pranks on mortals, such as conjuring illusionary people who claimed to be in need. They normally left high-ranking people alone for fear they might have ties to the Grand Caliph. Hmm. Although Jin did not require food or drink to live, they enjoyed rich flavors, smells, and other sensations, obviously, hmm. you know. Okay, so you know we got the nobility. They like to mess with poor people. <laughs> like, okay. And for, they for like, anyone uh, looking to sense anything that smells nice, yes. Yeah, and, and for anyone looking to you know maybe appease a gin in their games, they commonly desired succulent fruits, great feasts, pungent wines, fine perfume, shimmering silks, beautiful women, smooth ah. satin, satin, oh. velvet. <laughs> I, the, I, I didn't even know that, but the very first thing that happened when the genie was summoned was our druid was like, here's a bunch of good berries. And I was like, yeah. okay, I guess. Sure, thanks. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, that worked out perfect then. <laughs> Classic <laughs> druid. Here, have a sensor bean. Have it's good berries. They're so good. It. <laughs> it's in the name. You piss off a gin and they're raising hell if they want mm. to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they are they are CR eleven. I'm gonna get into their abilities and yes. stats here in a second, but they are fairly powerful. Just as like the the base element, really. Damn. <laughs> yeah. so that's about all I have for their ecology and lore, pretty much. Uh, they they do go pretty deep. I don't want to go too wild. Yeah, they have I, different I, subsets, so it's like mm. just covering a, that as a baseline is a lot, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely opens us up to talk about the other, you know. Uh, variants of gin the afrit and you know yeah there's from from, from the fire elemental yeah those those are just the ones from the airplane like those are the yeah. standard ones that grant wishes from the lamp like the basic genie right. but there's so many others yeah yeah and you get hmm. into different variants and different power types and different alignments and societies it's very very interesting not to mention, there are sub elemental planes from mixing two yeah. different elemental yes. planes together. Yeah. So, or steam or mud or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, there's a lot of potential to just kind of like that's uncharted territory for Jin. So, as a DM, be like, hey, we got ourselves a genie from the uh, el- pair elemental plane of light. Like, ooh. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Like, Maybe it's a little bit weaker than a normal like air yeah. gin, but still, it's still a gin. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Be like part that's celestial, cool. you know? Ooh. Yeah, I can see that. Celestial gin. Light. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Ooh. I'm going to write that down. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going over the stat block here. Jin yep. are a large elemental, usually chaotic good, though I think they usually attend towards a neutral class. Um, their strength is a 21, dex of 15, constitution of 22, intelligence of 15, wisdom of 16, and charisma of 20. They're smooth talkers, bulky, strong, and uh, pretty mobile, even though they're bound to the lamp most of the time. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, we have elemental demise. If the genie dies, its body disintegrates into a warm breeze, leaving behind only equipment the genie was wearing or carrying. Then we have innate spell casting. The genie's innate spell casting ability is charisma, which you can expect with that kind of a... uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. With a twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You get that. Uh, they cast with their three. abs. That's all I need to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're just suppose it gets you know on base. I will you get detect evil and good, detect magic, thunder wave, uh, three times per day, create food and water. Can create wine instead of water. <laughs> Very specifically, <laughs> they can thing. make wine. Yeah. 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 Once a day, conjure air elementals. Creation, gases form, invisibility, major image, and plane shift. Okay, so they got a good set of just being able to make stuff in general. So yep. even when they're not uh, wishing things into existence, they're still just like, hey, have whatever you want. Snap, snap. I mean, they have a three hit scimitar multi attack and they have the create werewolf create whirlwind ability a five foot radius 30 foot tall cylinder of swirling air magically forms on a point the djinn can see within 120 feet the whirlwind lasts for as long as the djinn maintains concentration any creature with the djinn that enters the whirlwind must succeed on a dc 18 strength saving throw or okay. be strained the djinn can move cell. the whirlwind up to 60 feet is an action 
creatures restrained by the whirlwind move with it. The whirlwind ends if the djinn loses sight of it. Hmm. Hmm. I'm glad they didn't fight it. There was one moment where our bard was like, maybe going to take a shot at it. And I'm glad they didn't. But I'm like, if you did, I could, I could play with this. This looks fun. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. This is all I have for Jin today. Yeah. I, I think pretty, there's a lot of potential a there. version of that. Yeah. yeah. A bit of a bridge, leave room for uh, the other stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to talk about here. All right. So, Sam, IRL fight yeah. score. Could you fight one of these? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, let's say, situation, you know, you find a lamp, you know, you're like, oh, it's kind of nice, a little dirty. You know, yeah, yeah. Like a genie pops out. My first inclination is like, I'm not fighting the gas man, first of all. <laughs> I'm giving him whatever I got and seeing if I can get something out. <laughs> but what if the genie's nice and offers you the yeah. wish? Do you take it? Yeah, I might take the wish. I'm going to be as specific as I can. <laughs> you so write out like a 20-page contract, like a, like a very <laughs> yeah. detailed, like, yeah, here you go. Exactly. Hold on, let me run this by my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But case B, if I have to fight it, I think I'm gonna be cooked. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I subscribe to that uh, the contract <laughs> idea because if it were me, let's see, things I could do: world peace. Mm, that's not sustainable. Uh, feeding everybody. Well, you know that that can only last for so long, or get monkey pod, oh, or yeah. or. I could just give reality a power system from an anime of my choice. <laughs> hey, yo. hey that, that's on. chaotic okay. as fuck. So they're not going to ruin might. it because I would do that. Yeah. I would be like, can you make Nen from Hunter Hunter real? Be like, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just think about it. Cause that causes so much societal chaos that they'll be I mean, down for it. The whole system would break down overnight. It would be like we would have to figure this shit out, or it would be a free for all. Oh, one of the two, you know? Man. Yeah. I would be. I would love. I've been thinking about writing a series like that for a long time. Just like the entire premise is, one guy got access to a magical wish, and he just wished that the power system from his favorite uh, fictional thing was was now real. Well, so now we're all dealing of, with it. That kind of happened in My Hero Academia, if you've seen it. That's the whole point. Because it I was mean, our, yeah, our, we don't rough. see it because it happened in the past, but the idea was the world was normal. And then one day, superpowers mm -hmm. just became a thing. And it's like, yeah, it destroyed society for a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonder that they didn't see this one baby and then like just fucking disappear it. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> How long did they let it propagate? They let it change well, like, the future of their society. In the later parts of the manga, I'm not going to spoil anything, but we do find out something about the, the baby. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we find out some other stuff. It's <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. Yeah. To, to be fair, babies tend to be cute. So maybe, That's you know, true. baby charm that shit. Ah, yeah. perhaps. I, I don't know. I, I haven't really kept up with uh, My Hero just because it, it's very... Like it's good, but it's not nearly as good as everyone props it up to be. So the it's just like manga is ending soon, and it's, it's like in its final phase, and it's it's getting good right now. I mean, it's like it's been good for the past couple of months, but like yeah, it's really solid right now. Nice, nice. That's something to look forward to because like I do keep up with the anime because like I said, mm -hmm. it's good, just not as much as like people overhype yeah. it to be. Yeah, I, I like it pretty good. It's uh, season seven's coming out, I think, in May. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. Nice. Where did Sam run off to? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he found a genie. Maybe yeah, he found right a lady. <laughs> I got my wish. <laughs> you got your wish. What'd you wish for? Can't tell you. It won't come true. <laughs> Is that how that works? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That would be the project to run with a genie. <laughs> Oh, oh no, the OBS is screwing up on me again. Got him. There it is. Never saw it coming. Apparently. Oh. There we go. We are back on track. Yes. All right. I guess now would be a good time to head into our news, perhaps. Yes. This is Deanna bringing you <laughs> Nerd News. 
Yes. This week in nerd news. So, uh, have you guys heard about the uh, Wizards of the Coast possibly talking about selling off d and I heard of this about oh, an hour boy. ago when you mentioned this to me. <laughs> Insider okay. info. <laughs> yes. Well, this was something that broke uh, earlier this week, where uh, apparently from a Chinese uh, publication, because uh, Tencent yeah. is a Chinese company and they have partial shares with Larian Studios, who, as you know, makes Baldur's Gate. I know that. I know that name. That's from ah. a video game thing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, a uh, you know, supposedly, like, uh, well, Wizards of the Coast, they, they say they're denying this outright, but, you know, I've been lied to before. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm a little suspect here, you know, maybe, maybe some Chinese reporter got the scoop here. So basically how the story goes is that apparently uh, ten uh, Larian Studios is all like, hey, uh, we would go bankrupt if we tried to buy out the IP for this so that we can make more uh, games on our own. So they kind of kicked it up to their my parent company with Tencent. Like, hey, we can make a lot of money with uh, this right here. So T Tencent is supposedly going up with uh, some Nagoff, uh, at least video game rights. We don't know if there's any potential for other things that they might be uh, talking to, like a the full intellectual property of D&D, so it, it's hard to really know for sure. I mm. think, if anything, it would probably be the video game rights thereafter, because Baldur's Gate yeah, is just immensely successful. I don't think they're trying to buy all of mm, D&D, but, like, if they could get the... I mean, there has to be a sequel oh, now, like, maybe less than 20 you. years, because, oh, like, Baldur's Gate 3 is absurd. It's oh, so popular. So he's disconnected in the loops. Oh, is it? Because I hear him just fine. Oh, wait. Okay. Oh, it, it seems oh, to be Star working. Boy got, Starboy got disconnected <laughs> on, uh, yeah, Sam. Oh, okay. It, yeah, it, it was Sam. This has happened can you, can you, before. Can you still hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, I hear you just fine. Good. Yeah, you, you lagged for a second there, and then Sam went down. Ah. We... My co-host has returned. Hello. Hello. He's back. Alive? Yes, alive and well, I should hope. Very nice, nice. Okay. Hopefully, uh, Watsy hasn't sent the Pinkertons to take away my co-host because we're reporting on this news. <laughs> <laughs> if only. Uh, dude, I wish Wizards would uh, send some uh, some mercenaries to harass me about some <laughs> cards or some D and D shit. <laughs> That would make Stop my day. Wizards of the Coast, like the hit squad, just show up at your front door. Yeah. Well, you know, knowing me, I'd be like, yo, guys, you want to go on? You want to be on my podcast? <laughs> like, <laughs> breaking news. Breaking uh, that'd be something. Dude. So as it stands, they... They were only talking about preliminary discussions, maybe like kind of brushing the topic. So if anything is to come of it, we'll hear about it later this year at some point. Hopefully, uh, personally, I'd like to see like maybe some of uh, D&D &D be put in hands that aren't going to fumble the whole thing because I happen to yeah. like this hobby. <laughs> and I although, do, too. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> and then Baldur's Gate was just fantastic. You know, I really enjoyed it. Yes. And then let's see, uh, as far as other D&D news, we got the, apparently they're pushing back the uh, one D&D or whatever they're calling the uh, newish half edition or whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever that was. Not sixth edition, but like. Yeah. Not sixth edition, but I guess uh, not 5.5. It's 5.5 people. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Just, just stay consistent with the numbering. Why do people always have to do that? <laughs> yeah. I, like, ha I had a whole thing about Xbox yesterday where it was just like, come on, guys, pick a system. Yeah, it's just like, oh, we got the Xbox One. No, it's the Xbox That's Xbox the third one, one actually. No, it's actually the third one that came out. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's weird because like they're like the the one S, the the one X, oh, just just the one like Series X. Uh, I don't oh, even God. know. 
the, the naming's terrible. If so anyway, just, D&D yeah. 5.5. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So they're pushing back their release dates uh, to uh, late May, uh, some of the rumors are uh, saying, to as far back as uh, sometime in the summer. They were planning for sometime in the spring, but, you know, they got a lot of stuff that they're trying to clean up here. Hmm. So the design okay. team... Uh, Working on the uh, basic stuff with the player's handbook, dungeon master's guide, monster manual. The, as far as uh, we can tell right now, not ready for launch. So you can expect it somewhere in the summertime, probably <laughs> later, because things are getting crazy up there. Which probably means the fall, all, all things considered, you know? Yeah. Right. Like if they, they were saying spring, they're telling us summer. Okay, so you mean so what you're telling me is uh, uh October seventeenth. That's yeah, it'll yeah. Be out. Locked you know, in. There you go. It, it's an election year, so the real October surprise is D and D. Obviously, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, because by the time we get that far into the year, we'll be so fed up with all these political ads that we're all going to just throw our TVs out the window and play D and D. Obviously, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what they really want from us. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I am so scared yeah. of having to deal with the, the political uh, stuff because oh, people yeah. are not no one on any side is ever going to shut up. And then there's going to be mm -hmm. deep fakes everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, I want to make deep fakes of every candidate and have them come out with a stance on pineapple on pizza. Oh, that's important to know. That I should be mentioned this. in the, the debates. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, I need to know, does my president support pineapple or no? He absolutely should. Okay, you guys are for pineapple. Good, because I'd have to leave. I am. If, yeah, oh, yeah. Pineapple on pizza, 100%. I don't know about, I don't know about this, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let anybody put whatever they want on the pizza, you know? That's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> That's freedom right there. Freedom. Uh, I'm working in a pizza place right now. I'll throw whatever you want on there. Hell <laughs> yeah. Put some freedom on it. Freedom. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom tastes like pepperoni. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> the most basic of toppings. I love pepperoni. Freedom looks and has the exact same consistency as melted cheese. So here you go. You know what? That sounds amazing. I'd be very happy if that was the taste of freedom. But moving on, right. we, yeah. we do have... One final interesting piece of news this week. Foundry VTT has partnered with the Wizards of the Coast for official D&D content to be added to Foundry. So th that's interesting. Like, I've been using Foundry for our D&D campaign, so I'm just like, excuse me? Like, this is a third-party yeah. thing? I'm getting all this first-party treatment? Like, I don't know how I feel about this. It it's weird. Is like, it's pretty weird. I, I think they're th one of the implications here is either they're trying really hard to push their own VTT behind the scenes and mm -hmm. failing, so mm -hmm. trying to kind of shove off all of the uh, all their content onto Foundry and be like, hey, this Foundry, they they got the D and D VTT experience right here, like right, trying to back them a little bit. It makes more yeah. sense instead of instead of trying to sell one VTT uh, with a D and D to just like okay scrap that idea and just partner with all of the VTTs because if you partnered with all of them then you're selling to everybody. Yeah. Oh yeah, essentially. I mean, well, that's what that's where my brain's at. I think that'd be the way to go, but we'll see. I mean, we don't work in. I mean, who do we know? We're just. You know, guys, we're just people. <laughs> we're just dudes. Yeah, we just talk on the internet. You know, what talk. do we know? We're just nerds. <laughs> we're just three dudes. Orion's wearing a Batman shirt, for God's sake. What do we know? <laughs> he, honestly. He can't be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Final piece of uh, nerd news is uh, uh, it happened <laughs> earlier this month on January 10th. Uh, uh, Janelle... Oh, oh. <laughs> happy birthday, but this is so sad. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Janelle uh, Jaque, uh, Jaque? Uh, however you say her name, uh, was uh, 
it, she was a big time uh, contributor to lots of role playing games, D and D, the Dark Tower, Caverns of uh, uh, Tharsia, uh, for the Judges oh, Guild. Uh, you know what this means, right? What? Clearly, I absorbed her life force. Um, oh wow! Okay, and, and must uh... persist in her movement. You know, oh, because like on uh... her legacy. Oh, I see. So where one D and D game designer uh, closes, another one opens. Exactly. Exactly. This is this is the moment they've been waiting for. I will <laughs> I will carry on your wayward son or some <laughs> carry on the wayward. Son. <laughs> Uh, damn i don't have that on my soundboard sam look what you've done to me yeah, you don't need the copy it's fine she uh, also yeah. worked on she worked on pac-man and donkey kong too oh, shit. as well as quake and yeah. age of empires oh, this woman was remarkable i yeah, know I right shout out to her well thank you for everything you've done yeah rest in peace like she's rest done some amazing work peace. absolutely yeah We'll give you the the D and D send off, or I'll roll a D six for you. Is that is that how we do it? Is I don't know, right? but that's a lot of damage. damage. I don't have it. My, <laughs> my funeral, everyone has to roll a D six. I have a dice down here now. Okay, let's go. Okay, <laughs> we got to roll one out for the recently deceased. Five. <laughs> I got a six. So the, the winner that gets the highest number has to like okay, you have to like send her, you know, flowers and stuff now. Yeah, like, <laughs> uh, that that's what everyone needs to do at my funeral. Roll for initiative. Roll for initiative. <laughs> <laughs> they just open the coffin and just roll for initiative written across it. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> So all you know, the doors in the funeral parlor lock. It's just like, what? <laughs> what am I going to do? Strings to rise my body into the air. <laughs> all I know is like Baldur's Gate has uh, made me very like I, I got like a brain for these kind of uh, interactions now because yeah. like I've been playing on uh, one of the higher difficulties that they're like, OK, got to be tactical. I don't want to have my team wiped here. So first step, arcane lock, lock one of the doors. <laughs> yeah, I've done that before. Yeah, I, I did the opposite, though. I went normal the first time I played it. And then the second time I'm like, all right, let's go easy mode now so I can actually enjoy the story this time. You know? <laughs> I feel that I feel that uh, I kind of got a little bit of a taste of it at first just because of watching my wife play. And then it's just like she's one of those like. She was reading Twilight before it was popular, so okay. naturally Astarians like, oh, she's yeah. like, oh, th this one right here, uh, all the way, and it's just like, okay, it had a very strange interaction with that actually when we did our uh, co-op playthrough, because okay. there there is a thing that can happen like when he tries to feed on uh, one of your characters, and so he tries to feed on her and ends up killing her. So nice. your, your long yeah. rest and normally if you're just yeah. one player, this, you rest. Oh, by the way, game over. You're dead. You, one of your party members went and killed you. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, OK, that happens, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But in this case, since uh, we were both playing uh, long rest, get up in the morning. Oh, she's dead. Revivify. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gets to have been lying there. Uh, I don't know. This will yeah. probably work. Uh, yeah. You know, this, this is a little questionable. And then she got to have this whole dialogue about you fucking killed me. <laughs> Didn't even know that could be a thing. <laughs> I uh in my playthrough right now we so I'm playing as the dark urge and we killed the uh, uh, the the bard character right, mm. and uh, then I immediately went over to Withers and got a uh, like another like recruit and made them look exactly like the bard and like ah, she, <laughs> she's still here guys she never died she's <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious yeah. And just as psychotic as the Dark Urge should be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, her name the Dark Urge, let's be real. The Bark Urge, because I'm a tree. In oh, line. Yeah. Groot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, trees have urges, don't you know? Groot yeah, they do. They do. 
he's the giving tree and what he <laughs> gives is pain. <laughs> no matter how many times I hear someone say that it never gets old. It's so good. <laughs> There's so many tree puns. It's a fun time. Yeah. I really. love it. Uh, I am so excited for our D and D tomorrow. Cause like you all get to go up against the beaver man again. Oh God. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's just me at this point, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, how unfortunate would it be to lose at the fight? At this we got time? two <laughs> Devil Fruit users in the party, so it's like, okay, they can't go in the water. <laughs> They're at the top. Yeah, I, I jumped off a cliff. <laughs> uh, I feel like Tekken would really appreciate this. One of our guys is playing a Lunarian uh, oh, with, the, perfect. with yeah. the horse horse fruit. He's a flying oh, hell so Pegasus. That's so fuck it. Like a like a oh, it was a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, it's dude, metal as fuck. I now know about like there's like four different One Piece D and D's going on to my Ooh. knowledge. Ah, uh, yeah, so, I saw one that was just started a few weeks ago, and they're on like episode five or six. So that's a yeah, this is a new thing. This is the new trend. Yeah, uh, I guess so. And here I am just sitting on like three or four episodes on my computer, not fully edited. And I'm just like, I'm not a video guy. If, if anyone wants to volunteer and be my video guy to now, edit some stuff you up, do. you record it and you just put the whole thing up. You don't edit shit. There it is. Beautiful. Easy, done. Yeah. done. <laughs> yeah. Really, the only ones that need editing are just the first three that we did just because I didn't have our overlay uh, quite up to where I wanted it to be. Right. So like yeah, yeah. now that we have things looking nice, I can just straight upload everything else. Go for it. Yep. Just ship it. The whole thing. I ship it. <laughs> what are you doing there, Sam? <laughs> the cat's a box gremlin. Oh, well, they're cats. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Well, forever we have that rule where if a, if you uh, offer your dice to the cats, you know, you can double your damage. Mm. That is true. I allow it. <laughs> Provided the cat rolls well. Yes. If you ever have cat vantage. Cat vantage. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Uh, moving on, we do have our homebrew, Sam. Do you want to start this week's uh, homebrew or should I? Sure, I'll go ahead. All right. As all homebrew goes, it's acceptable in the generic realm where all D and D comes together. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the look on Tekken's anyway. face was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I did not expect that, but I'm like, all right, we're 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 jamming with this. All right, cool. <laughs> so, I have brought in the spell created by Reddit user MythMaker Five E, who is also a you know pretty avid you know arter art arter creator <laughs> in the <laughs> in pretty the avid arter. Okay. Yeah. He does art. He's art. (laughs) This is brilliant. (laughs) Looks really cool. Yeah, yeah, I think this. I I was reading this bow and I was like, (laughs) "Ayo, they're cooking. They're definitely cooking." All right. So we have. Okay, I'm I'm pulling this up on the stream for everybody so they can uh, check that out. Evolve, huh? Yeah. Third level transmutation usable by druid, rangers, sorcerers, and wizards. Casting time one action with a range of touch with a somatic component. The duration is concentration up to one hour or one hour. See below. So you touch a willing creature and evolve its natural aspects for the duration. As described below, you can cast this spell targeting a creature already under its effects. The new casting does not require concentration. When you do, use the enhanced effects noted. So first things first. The creature has natural armor. It has plus one bonus to its AC, enhanced to plus two. If the okay. creature has natural weapons, those weapons have plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls. Enhanced, plus two in the damage and the weapons count as magical for the purposes of overcoming immunities and resistances. Hmm. If the creature has a special sense, such as dark vision, tremor sense, or blind sight, the range of the sense is doubled. When enhanced, it is instead tripled. And the creature's speed is increased by 10 feet, enhanced to 20 feet, and its jump distance is doubled when enhanced tripled. 
So I think this sounds really cool. If anyone who has like a familiar or like, you know, uh, a companion pet, like the rangers that have like the oh, like, picture, like, a, like, like a blink dog, you know, something yeah, yeah, simple, yeah, yeah, yeah. You evolve it. <laughs> Digivolve into that would champions. Be so cool. You throw that on your typical find familiar, and you already yeah. got something that's gonna yeah, go yeah. wild. You got something that's able to fight now. Like, yeah, hey, it's... that thing was basically created for like, hey, these familiars are like challenge rating like a quarter. They're not really yeah. that strong. Let's 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 make them digivolve a bit. Yeah, yeah the, even the Digimon treatment. I like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I say. Uh, add this to the artificer spell list if you really yeah. want to sell that aesthetic. Yeah, too. Yeah, using like uh, some yeah. kind of chemical enhancement or something. Yeah, you slap that on a, a steel defender, that'll pop off real quick. <laughs> yeah. Metal Greymon. Here we oh. go. Metal Greymon. <laughs> That'd be so cool. And then I just picture like like a druid that has like summoned creatures. Slap an evolve on there. <laughs> yeah. I, I like this. I really do. It it kind of hits that little bit of a kind of combining. What is it? Um, magic weapon. Uh, like there, there's a few different spells for that, and uh, primal like, savagery like, with like a yeah yeah kind of like mixing some of those concepts together. But you know, this is good. I think about it, and I may I could be wrong here, and I don't really know of any druid things that like affect other creatures too much because druids are like, like about altering themselves right yeah and yeah yeah well and uh our druid cool. has like spike growth and like grass yeah, vines like like grow plant life and stuff yeah like that. as far as like yeah. creatures go you really don't see them like influencing things like that too much I i've seen so a I few really things like that are kind of like that but it's not really outside of the uh typical like oh i'm just gonna buff somebody or yeah. something like that maybe what is it that there is that one spell where you can make a animal intelligent and you be like yeah. oh hey yeah. talking Awaken. animals yeah like awakening or something yeah, yeah yeah i can even see you know this being something like maybe it goes up a size class you know because like making mm. something a little bit bigger I would make sense. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For evolutionary, you know, sense. Uh, maybe you know, in a all, in terms of upcasting, like if you upcast it, go up a size class. I mean, you, you do Ooh, have the yeah. like variant usage, you know. So maybe if you enhance it, you know, it goes up to a large. As if it's a medium or something, I could see that. That would be really cool. Mm. That picture, like you, you know, you have a ranger with a dog. You enhance it; it grows to a, a large dog now. And now you can ride it. Like you're like a mask. You, you, like yeah, you and mask. a few people maybe can ride it. Like you're getting into like small dinosaur territory. <laughs> like I like it a lot. Okay. My favorite, uh, my favorite, like pet companion thing is, I believe it says it has to be challenge rating a quarter or lower, and I think a mm -hmm. Velociraptor does meet that criteria. Yeah. So, but the thing yeah. is, like, real Velociraptors are like the size of like turkeys. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not like in Jurassic Park. But still, you have a Velociraptor. Like the small, like yeah, yeah. And in with the picture having like a raptor in it, that's exactly where my mind went. And exactly. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Or give yeah. it to something like, I don't know, like a hawk, you know? Now you have like a crazy bird. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe and like, where it has route. to be a willing creature, it would most likely have to be something that is under the party's control to begin with. So that yeah. kind of a self-balancing situation on its own. Mm -hmm. So I could picture like uh, if Nifera was still alive in our campaign, her using this on like stock or Haku or something. Uh, <laughs> that, would really it, cool. that would be something. Stock becomes like a wear cat. <laughs> a wear. <laughs> now nah, you could have a lot of fun with this. Yeah, yeah. I like this. I give this a ten out of ten. This is like my my niche one hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really like that, and just there's so much potential there, and I love spells that just have potential like even mm -hmm. like a, just right off the start we're like hey this would be really cool but what if add this like mm -hmm. yeah. that right there gives me a 10 out of 10 because if it gets the gears going that's what i like to see you know and it doesn't sound that strong you know giving no. one to two to ac giving one to two damage from you know weapon attacks counting as magical that's not that crazy good vision you know better senses 
move, movement speed. You know, it's all good stuff. Nothing too, you know, too crazy. Yeah, it's all pretty reasonable. And interestingly enough, Sam, you and I both brought in spells this time. So yeah, not, I did see that. <laughs> not often that that happens. To a clunky lover from a few episodes ago. Yeah, I, I realized that after I found it, I was like, wait a minute, we've featured this guy on here before. Shout out to them again. Thank you, Mythmaker, for the spell. I love it. I will be stealing it from my future games. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to just adjust this a little bit. There we go. So this time I bring to you guys a, a very weird spell. Uh, one that a little bit. Get already. This is wow. <laughs> I mean, if looking at the art itself, it kind of like tells you everything you need to know about this. It's it's awesome yeah. though. Uh, I'm just surprised that that like it says here that the art was made with Doll E3. Mm -hmm. That's Ooh. pretty impressive I, for AI art. It is good, and also I I don't know why I think it's just because it's a skeleton and it's a parade, but I just immediately thought of the Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. It's just exactly. Like, wait a minute, is that the parody? Is that what they're going with here? <laughs> that might be the inspiration. Front. Yeah, the leg bone is duplicate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, the leg bone's a little weird. Well, you know, you do what you want with the uh, skeletons when you're summoning up your own little skeletal army. I mean, yeah. Look, when you're a when you're a necromancer, you know, it's like you have some extra bones. It's like shit. Well, just throw it over there. It reminds me of when I was running uh, my previous campaign. Uh, the the party met a necromancer, and he was uh, in front of like a council of liches that were at their annual meeting. <laughs> And uh, he had this zombie with, that had like a keg built into him. So he's just like, okay, now hear me out, guys. Uh, what better to keep your brew cold than a cold one? <laughs> than a cold. Perfect. <laughs> oh, dude. And just like, it's just a zombie with a little spigot and then like he a little barrel. He has like a little thing, a faucet. I don't know if you want to drink out of it, but like he has it, you know? There's yeah. A, I, I want to do this so bad in a campaign. I don't know what, but I, I want the uh, the party to arrive and like at like there's a necromancer's like castle and there's a bunch of zombies, <laughs> but the zombies have like unionized against the necromancer. Be like, <laughs> we we local zombies four seven <laughs> six, <laughs> please join. You know the the cause. It's <laughs> just like, <laughs> and the necromancer's like, God, these freaking zombies are protesting out of my front door. <laughs> So your necromancer is, is Walmart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just say that because, like, our uh, our audio editor was uh, t <laughs> uh, telling me the other day about this situation where, like, they had – he works for Walmart, so they, they gave him, like, a this whole video spiel on why uh, unions are bad. And I'm just oh like, my God. that's my, hilarious. My mom worked for that company for 26 years. It's it's a shit show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, please. Oh, yeah. To Walmart. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Walmart is a place, not a place you might want to go, but it's a place. Oh, it's a Those place, and you won't be able to forget America. about it if you live in America. <laughs> this is true. I've never heard of a Walmart. Good. Keep it that way. Yeah, good. <laughs> well, it might be a good place to cast this spell: Skeleton Parade, a fourth-level necromancy spell. That it takes an action, has a range of 90 feet, components are verbal and somatic, uh, concentration up to an hour, and is available to the bard and warlock. Now, uh, that is some exclusivity that I like. It's very on brand for something like this. It's fitting for both of them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So you call forth a band of musical skeletons, which appear in an unoccupied space that you can see within range. This band uses the band skeleton stat block. The band uh, disappears when it drops to zero hit points or the spell ends. The band is an ally to you and your companions. In combat, the band shares your initiative count but it takes its uh, turn after yours. It obeys your verbal commands and no action required uh, by you. If you don't issue any, it takes the dodge action and uses its move to avoid danger. You can upcast this when you uh, cast the spell using a spell slot of 5th level or higher. The higher uh, 
levels uh wherever the spell level appears in the stat block okay so uh upcasting will modify the stat block a little bit so yeah i saw that yeah i'm saving this so, by the way well, how, many, so fucking cool. how many is a huge swarm we're talking like a hundred uh, so that's like the rules for like swarms, like with like swarm of rats or whatever. I'm not yeah. really. Yeah. yeah so like uh, these are a bunch of medium undead. So huge would just be a, a, a swarm of them, a whole bunch of them. They operate it's a gaggle as a of skeletons. Yeah. yeah. They got drums. They got flutes. They got lutes. They got cymbals. Uh, one of them has a little bell. <laughs> It just has a triangle. Oh, you know? <laughs> uh, dude, imagine being the parent that has to tell people, oh, yes, my son is in the uh, very uh, famous orchestra. Oh, wow, that orchestra. I've heard of them. What does your son play? Triangle. He plays triangle on the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, all right. Uh, dude, to be that parent, I, I tell you. <laughs> I would be proud. Uh, I would be too. Uh, before I get into the stat block, uh, when I first saw this, I didn't realize it was uh, AI right away. Then I, I kind of like look closer, and like there's this one little background character on the side that almost looks like Weird Al. I saw that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> See the fact you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just like I see the character in the front that kind of looks like me. <laughs> uh, self insert. It looks like it looks like you're playing like a harmonica or something there. Just like hey. as the as the band's coming by, you just take out the harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> the expression that the leader of this band has, uh, Adam, right there, is just like, yo, but I, I'm running a band here, and here you off playing street harmonica. You upstaging like, me, how? bro. <laughs> uh dude people shit on ai art but i personally think it's hilarious it's not a replacement it's just hilarious yeah it gets the job done for sure <laughs> okay Somebody was making of this ai art so the so the ac equals your spell save dc fair enough okay yeah uh, uh, max hit points are 35 plus 10 for each spell uh, level above uh fourth 30 feet movement. Uh, the stats are nothing to write home about with a 12 strength, 16 dex, yeah. 15 con, uh, 10 and 11 for in intelligence and wisdom, 14 for charisma. Okay, that's mild. 14, yeah, actually, that's not charisma, So they're not a great band. They're, they're yeah, okay. They're all right, you know, but they're they not going to blow you away or anything. Team. They're essentially the, the starter band from the SpongeBob episode. They, yeah, I understand. They don't, His mayonnaise uh, instrument. They don't yes. have lungs, so the woodwinds. They don't have lungs. They're, <laughs> they're a little flat. Flat. None of them have wind. Wait, no, this one definitely has like a flute or something. Yeah, this right? one definitely has a woodwind instrument. I don't know what the hell that <laughs> How is. How is he blowing it? Exactly. <laughs> so it's just drums mainly, percussion and like triangle and stuff, and that's it. He's just. <sighs> <laughs> I mean, can kind of speak, right? Like, yeah, kinda. yeah, sure, sure, they can. Yeah, if One Piece has taught me anything, it's that a skeleton can poop. He can do everything. Yep. Yep. Ah, right. uh, dude, if someone uh, decided to use this, I was just like, yo, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> every yeah, day. Yeah, they have a big sake at that point. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that that song goes unnecessarily hard. <laughs> oh, it's amazing! It's a great song. <laughs> So uh, they are vulnerable to uh, bludgeoning attacks at, and resistance. Uh, okay. I think they're the oh. way that they worded this wasn't, it didn't come out great. Yeah. Like I'm seeing says, some flaws in the stat block here and it's yeah, just like. It damage vulnerabilities, bludgeoning, not from attacks, damage resistances, damage from attacks. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. So uh, yeah. You know what? Maybe English isn't their first language. Maybe not. Well, well, maybe this does make sense. I don't know. Maybe because if it says damage resistances from attacks, they're just they're resistant to attacks, and that doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, that that is weird. Uh, I mean, immune to poison makes sense. Uh, they got yeah. the typical exhaustion, grapple, par 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 yeah. paralysis, poisoned, and restrained and stunned immunities. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I would just, I would just say with vulnerabilities, just have it be bludgeoning like regular skeletons. Yeah. Like you'll whack them with right. something blunt, and they. I mean, these are essentially, you know, 
A who's from our basic skeletons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, these are I mean, skeletons yeah. that went to a band practice for a couple yeah. of days. Like they went to go. band camp. <laughs> they went to band camp. Yeah, <laughs> this one time at band camp. <laughs> uh, so the proficiency bonus equals uh, your bonus. Okay, decent. So this does scale up uh, beyond just level casting. So swarm the the band can occupy another creature's space and vice versa. The band can move through an opening large enough for a medium undead. The band can't regain hit points or uh, gain temporary hit points. Okay, so that's uh, okay. important to note there. So not as much cheesing as you might expect, but this is uh, purely for flair. So I'm okay with that. Yeah. Naturally, it's got multi attack. It is a full on band. And the number of attacks equals to half the spell's level rounded down. The band can replace one of these attacks with the use of its dreadful toot. Dreadful toot. <laughs> uh, half the spell's level rounded down. That's not that yeah, broken. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's decent, you know. Even if you casted it at ninth level, that'd be Jesus. like four attacks, I guess, would be the closest. Yeah, you'd be you'd be able to get, yeah. Yeah, so really, it, it's balanced. I, I'll say that. That's so funny. And the the naming for these actions on point. <laughs> Taze his ass, dreadful toot. <laughs> what? <laughs> that that must be the name of one of the songs. Make yeah, a melee yeah, weapon yeah. attack. Uh, with Here the comes the band with Taze his ass. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it. That does 2d6 plus 3 plus the spell's uh, level in lightning damage, or half as much uh, if the band is below half health. In addition, okay. the target uh, can't take reactions until the start of their next turn. Interesting. Okay, so they are... They're, the band is electric. I get it. Ah, yeah. Boogie, boogie, boogie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they play the electric boogaloo. That yeah, would they have, have been to a... have a genre. There you go. <laughs> Skeleton <laughs> Band 2, Electric Boogaloo. I'd watch that. Oh. Yeah. And then finally, Dreadful 2, as mentioned before, the band toots menacingly. Each menacingly. creature <laughs> Each creature of your choice within 15 feet of the band must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Uh, your spell save DC, or be frightened until the start of your next turn. That's that's not really that bad. Uh, I mean, that's just a yeah. standard, like, you know. Spooky toot. Yeah, spooky yeah. toot. Yeah. This yeah, is spooky. something that you use if you want to, like, terrify your en enemy and bluff them with your superior numbers yeah, yeah if you want to be oozed like off and just be like i have an army yeah exactly local necromancer gets his hand on a scroll thinks he's a big shot yeah exactly you go into yeah. town and you're like i have an army of skeletons just ignore the fact they all have musical instruments just, just <laughs> ignore that they're they're an army of the undead and they're coming for your ass <laughs> You and what army? Only the army of the musical undead. No! <laughs> <laughs> and they just Damn. start singing, you know, at the at the Super Bowl. There you go. Oh, Dude, that's a Super Bowl I would uh, get into. Honestly, like, like when it comes to the Super Bowl, I always look at it like, a, you know, sports nerds are, are not so different from us regular no, uh, nerds. They're not really. Definitely like we not. we like our stats, we we like our characters, we, we <laughs> like our factions. It's really all the same thing. So like maybe once in a while for the Super Bowl, I might be willing to LARP as a sports nerd. <laughs> I can see that. I can yeah, see that. I do that. Yeah. Yeah. So Ryan, what do you what do you think you would rate this one? Here? Uh, I'm going to give it a uh, seven because uh, it it's fun. It's balanced. There are some errors here, but you know what? That's perfectly fine because really yeah. it's not that powerful. So I could imagine a lot of people utilizing it at their table. I mean, there are a couple things that your DM can probably clean up if you bring it to a table. Right. And really it's just like the power that comes from this is your ability to utilize it for shenanigans like the yeah, shenanigans basically. are going to come from bluffing uh, be like hey look at bluffing me and my party. band 
Yeah, like we need to uh we need to sneak into this town. We need to cause a distraction. I know. <laughs> well, that's what hell of a distraction, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm friends with the band. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude that would work like you're trying to enter like i don't know some lord is throwing a party and it's just like hey i got the band it's just like oh shit okay yeah sure come on in Ooh, i could see this combining very well with a spell like seeming yeah oh, yeah yeah because yeah. yeah, like what's what seeming does is it's like disguise self for a whole party well just this is a swarm like if your DM it wants to be generous, I feel like the DM would be like, "That's an awesome idea. Let's fucking do that." Yeah, if your DM's not rule of cooling this, because <laughs> like, dude, you just walk in and you have an entire band as your entourage. It's just like, yo, this is me. This is this is Kiss. I mean, <laughs> all seeming does is you change the appearance of any number of creatures you can see within range. I mean, that's just the spell, you know. As long as yeah. they're, they're willing, it's mostly. Yeah, as long as they're willing, then yeah, you're fine. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. I, I'm just saying, like, this spell thrives off Scooby Doo shenanigans. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. I'm very big on Scooby Doo magic, so uh, I'm going to give it a seven yeah. out of 10. I feel it. Yeah, I'd say about the same. Definitely a lot to do, a lot of creativity you can put into it, just like with the other one. You know, mm -hmm. it's all about what the player can do with it. <laughs> And honestly, I'm not too afraid of a player breaking my game with it. No. Yeah, no, me either. This is, I feel like I wouldn't be as scared as, like, RKOing my party with, like... <laughs> with a band of skeletons. Yeah, and, like, it would yeah. be for a fun time, not a real threat, I feel. Or a potential threat, if used correctly. You know? It also kind of uh, leads credence to the Bardomancer, you know? Like, a, yeah. the, the Bard Necromancer. The bard exactly. really wanted to be a necromancer in his day, and he just never really he never passed the tests, you know. At, at the no, he, he always vibed with the black metal instead, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. Usual classical vibe. He's Swedish, yeah. The... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard you guys have an undead problem. Don't worry, call me the Pied Piper. Ah, there you go. I never know if I'm saying that right because it's like a pie eyed bite, but I don't know. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird word. Yeah, pie piper. <laughs> pied piper. Yes. Pied yeah. piper. Yes. What's, the pied piper of the undead. Do we have much else here, Ryan? No. Pretty that, much <laughs> that's about it. Uh, oh, man. Stretch. So, teching. Uh, yeah. I do want to ask, like, a. Uh, you haven't completed at least one full online, like a uh, streamed uh, campaign. Uh, yeah. What would you uh, give for advice to people that are trying to kind of get into that kind of space? Like uh, just from your personal experience? Well, yeah, my experience is just as a player on that one. Uh, I, I got to tell you, the first thing that I was worried about when Rustage came to me with that, this was back in like March of, no, this was before that, like January, 2020. This was right before COVID. So it was really nice that I had something yeah. to do during when lockdown was happening. But he told me this idea about One Piece D&D &D and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's a cool idea, but it's probably not going to go longer than four to five episodes because getting five people to every two weeks, like people yeah. have schedules, it's going to be hard. So I guess my advice would be to have like, you know, make sure to figure out schedules and get a small group, but it's okay. Like we skip weeks all the time. Like Rustage is in Japan right now. So we're not doing, we're skipping. A oh, week. Man, we're that's awesome. Yeah, it's great. And so, um, yeah, but we, we stay consistent with it as much as possible. And, uh, the fans love it. We have a subreddit and every, not a subreddit. Oh yeah, we do have a subreddit, but we also have a oh. wiki and we have a discord mm. for it and it's so much fun. And, um, the community is so, oh. so great. Oh yeah, that's awesome. We hope to follow in you guys' footsteps someday. Yeah. I hope I hope it works Maybe out. Yeah, I, I, I missed yeah. it. I, I we're doing we're doing Marines now, but like I I missed the original campaign just because we did it for so long. It was like, man, that was a great character, William. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole uh, party was very endearing. Like, I really enjoy just like how like Doros is just like okay, he's this like noble guy, uh, yep. and just like. He shouldn't, by all means, he shouldn't be a part of a pirate crew. No. But then he just is, and it works. I love how every time I did something stupid and, and noble, it was always just like, now, Captain. <laughs> like, that was like his basic catchphrase after a while. Right. Uh, uh, it's great. It's great. 
So how do you like, uh, what's your thoughts on being on like the, the Marine side of things now? Cause like that, that's completely oh, yeah. different. That creates a whole other paradigm where we were pirates and it was like, we just do whatever we want. And it's like, we mm -hmm. murder people. It's like, we're pirates. You know what I mean? But now we have this whole thing where it's like every battle, when we take somebody out, it's always like, all right, well, do we just straight up kill everybody or do we bring them in? And there was one fight we had where uh, we're fighting against this group called the sisters. And it's like, yeah, they're fighting us. They're like organized crime, but they're not like evil. You know what I mean? And so Noble's right. character, Damien, just like blew one of their heads off. And my character, Kai, is like, hey, let's not do this. And we got into like, a, there was like a civil war moment or something there where I was just like, <laughs> I, I always love you. those. Yeah. And it was, uh, I, 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 I actually yelled like in the campaign. I'm like, fuck you, Damien. I don't care about the rules. And I'm like yelling. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't really mean that, Noble. I'm sorry. I didn't really mean right, fuck right. you. It's just like, you know, it, we got into it and the fans loved it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's so good. That's fantastic. Uh, I hope that uh, our players in our current campaign feel uh, audacious enough to kind of like get that into their characters. Like we have some mm -hmm. good dynamics right now. And seeing as like uh, at least one or two of our uh, people, like uh, I know one, this is his first campaign and he's doing very well. Like we had PVP session one and like it didn't ruin anything. It, oh, worked. Yeah. it went really well. I was nervous when we started One Piece D&D because I'd only played D&D with one group for like we had a campaign, but it was like like seven episodes or so. I was I was like nervous and I was just like, it worked out great, though. Like everybody worked right. out pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, I would certainly say sure. so. Well, thank you. I'm sure people don't need any help finding you, but where? Can oh no, I'm around. You just you type in my name, and you'll people, find me. You know, find your address and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm on YouTube and Twitter. That's pretty much the only places I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's nice, guys. Shout out to Tech 101. Thank Thanks for, for having coming. me, guys. It's Absolutely, it's been a blast. Thank you. Yeah, yep. I'm it's great there. to be on. Yeah. As always, we are Dungeons and Talk Shows. Have a great weekend, everyone. And y'all can check us out on the... February! Wherever... Yes. <laughs> we got a good lineup this month. I I'm content with that. It's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, I shared that on my Twitter. Very yeah, the, uh, the chart thing. Yeah. Yeah. We actually got an interesting guest uh, for the start of next month. It, I swear the only reason he agreed to come on is because I share the same name as him. Ah, okay. Well, that's how I think you got to do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a it, it, dominance. Well, I thought it would be interesting to talk to the guy that got kicked off a critical role, you know? Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cuz like, you know, the redemption arc of that guy. I want to see where that goes. Yeah. Absolutely. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to all the listeners out there. Hope you enjoyed this episode. As Ryan said, we are Dungeons and Talk shows. This is Teching 101. Hope Thank you guys you. had a good episode. Yeah. Goodbye. Have a good one, everybody. See ya. I gotta pee. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta pee. You gotta leave that in now. Oh, yeah. don't worry. I haven't hit stop yet. I gotta pee. Uh, we love you, Sam.